Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today I am with Kelsey. How's it going? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. So today we're going to be talking about tips and tricks for cleaning games and kind of processing them. Whenever you go to a garage sale or a thrift store or something like that, oftentimes you get games that don't work the first time you put them in, or they're covered in stickers or other kind of gunk. So we're going to show you how to get rid of that. Awesome. Let's take a look. All right, so the reason why I wanted you to come on this video is because you, at your store, get a lot of these that come in, right? And yeah. They're often t bad condition. Yeah, in fact, most of the time when something comes in, the first thing I do is start a little bit of cleaning on it, even if it looks pretty good, just because I don't want to get any dirt on the inside of the system if I can avoid it. That makes sense. So before testing anything, I usually do a little bit of this, what is what I'm about to show you. So Q-tips are gonna be the most important tool here, and they're super cheap. Um, some people use, for the cleaning, they use things like Windex or Brasso. The safest option is isopropyl alcohol, and as close to 100% as you can get, because it can be cut with other things. Usually it's just water, but even still, water is not good on metal. Right. So you want to get as close to 100% as possible, uh, at least above 90%. Um, so all you're going to do is just dip the Q-tip in the isopropyl alcohol. You want to get it pretty wet. You don't want it like soaking and dripping off the Q-tip, but you want it to be wet enough to actually have the alcohol on it. And then all you're gonna do is scrub the pins till you can kind of hear the scrubbing against it. So uh, you can already see stuff is coming off of these. Yeah. And then you just wanna make sure you use the dry side, make sure there's no liquid left on it. So doing that a couple times almost always will work for you. That That's gonna fix 95% of the games that don't work. That makes sense. And then also too, I wanna mention that uh, while Q-tips work and I mean, and I use those for years. I do want to mention a product here that I use. They're the one-up cards. And basically it's kind of the same thing, except for it's just kind of optimized for cartridges and really fast to use. So you don't need eight of them. You don't need eight of them. <laughs> you, yeah, and it's cool too, because it's fairly sturdy. It works with Atari, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis. Um, and you just squirt the alcohol on one side, scrub it, flip it around the other side, it's perfect, so. And does the dirt kind of start to build up on there? How many cartridges do you think you can get out of one of these? I've cleaned a bunch, but it all depends on how dirty they are, obviously, because it, it is gonna accumulate on that piece right there. So I've cleaned a bunch with mine, but he does sell replacement packs, and I found that they last a long time. So it's a product that I really like, so definitely check it out. Cool. I also like to open them up if they have any more issues, um, you can sort of get at the board itself that way and look for any, you know, dings or breaks in the metal where metal's supposed to be touching metal, but it's not anymore. Um, and then just more general cleaning. A lot of that kind of stuff, most of the time just comes down to it being old and sitting out somewhere and getting some dirt on it. So if your game still isn't working, there are other ways. It doesn't mean it's gone forever, but they start to get a little bit more complicated and involve like heat guns and soldering. Uh, oftentimes the batteries are dry on cartridges. It's not a particularly difficult thing to do, but you do have to have a soldering iron. So it's a little beyond the scope of basics, beyond me. I, think. I don't have a soldering iron. <laughs> <laughs> I would bring it to you. Yeah, but there are, there are tons of game stores and local people, even just on like Craigslist or whatever, who are able to perform those sort of services. And I know John Riggs has a thing on his channel where yep. he resurrects cartridges from the dead much better than I can, so. Go John. There, there are other ways. So once you've gotten the cartridge working, now you can start to worry about how pretty it looks. So one of the things you're gonna run into is Sharpie on your cartridges. I know, somebody's name written yep, on it. Yep, which is, really annoying that you know mike or whoever tony has, yeah, yeah. They, they've all decided <laughs> to just put their name on this cartridge and now it's here forever but you can get rid of it and there's a couple different ways um the kind of least invasive way i always do is to uh run over it with dry erase marker leave it on for a little bit and then wipe it off dry erase marker of course is in no way permanent but it kind of loosens the 
the pigment in the Sharpie and allows it to come off. It's not gonna work perfectly right away. You might have to do it a couple times, but it does work pretty easily and most people have a dry erase marker laying yeah. around somewhere. Huh. Um, the other thing I like to do is if it's not on an important part of the cartridge, like if it's not super close to the label, I'll take the cartridge completely apart and I will go take that part of the cartridge that the- Just the plastic. Just the plastic um, that the Sharpie is on and I'll take it to the sink and scrub it with a sponge and soap and water. And that can work pretty well hmm. too. And then finally alcohol, again, alcohol tends to just kind of- It makes everything better. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol fixes everything, you heard it here. <laughs> but that's one of the ways to get rid of the Sharpie. So it's annoying, but it can totally be fixed. Same with stickers, which seem to be on everything, especially yeah. on on boxes, not so much on like cartridges, although it does happen, but on boxes, they tend to have a lot of stickers from GameStop or wherever. The, usually what you can do, super easy, just Google on. Yep, yeah, I use this, this a lot. This is such a great thing. Now, on boxes, I typically recommend you put some sort of paper or cardstock plastic material under it, you kind of slip it under the cover here so that uh, the Goo Gone won't slip onto the artwork itself. Or better yet, you can just remove the artwork yeah. from it and uh, and put it back in when you're all done. If you leave the Goo Gone on for five to 20 minutes, depending on how difficult the sticker is. Because, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but Goo Gone seems to kind of melt or break down the, the glue in there. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So um, it's a really weird slimy feeling, but it totally works. And it smells great. <laughs> <laughs> smells like fake oranges and citrus and I don't even know. So, some sort of like tropical drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the best way to get rid of stickers. I also usually have some sort of like little razor blade that will kind of help. I need to get one. I'm get always it. using my fingernail and I don't have fingernails. Yeah, it's, yeah I don't uh. either. So it, it's tough. And I, you want to get one that's like pretty sharp and you want to make sure that you are pretty accurate with it, not like stabbing your right. game, because you can totally put a rip in the plastic there. I also think that, that you're highlighting something here, and that's patience, is that a lot of this stuff really just takes patience. You have to kind of take your time, little small moves, and you know? Especially if there's a sticker on the label, you need to be so patient with that. Yes. It might not work without a heat gun, right. but sometimes it can if you just are really patient about the Goo Gone, if you feel it, giving you any resistance, you need to stop, add more goo gone, and wait longer. Almost every time I've ever accidentally ruined a label on a cartridge is simply because I was impatient. Because it was coming off, but I just, for whatever reason, you know, I was like, come on. It's frustrating. Sometimes it a single game can be, you know, you gotta wait two hours total to get the whole thing I know. clean. So <laughs> it can be frustrating. All right, so we talked about cartridges, but I'm kind of curious, what do you do when someone brings in a disc-based game and there's some there's some problems? So there's a couple different things that can go wrong with a disc and you've probably encountered all of them at this point. The worst one, or one of the worst ones, is the circle scratch that happens around the rings of, of the disc. So ah, it's the kind Xbox of, 360. Yeah, yeah, it happens <laughs> a lot on 360 games because for that original model, if you moved the Xbox while it was on and had a disc in there, it would just, yeah, it would just scratch a big old circle in your in your disc and it will never work again. Ouch. So the extremely frustrating thing about that is no one's really found a great way to restore those yet. There's There tends to just not really be a fix for it. I never advocate for throwing things away. I'm gonna wait for a day where someone figures it out, but I, <laughs> but you may be a little out of luck on that one. Um, there are lots of scratches that can be fixed though. So right. any scratches on the disc itself, I shouldn't say any, but most scratches on the disc itself, as long as it's not super deep and it's on you know the actual reflective side of the disc, can be fixed in a variety of ways. Now, you guys have probably heard of like- Toothpaste. The toothpaste, <laughs> toothpaste method or a banana peel or peanut butter, I've heard all kinds of things. My favorite is the deodorant. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's all the same principle. All that is really is they're just kind of filling in just a little bit uh, where the scratches are so that the disc reader isn't kind of, you know, doing this thing the whole time. Yeah. You can it, read it a little bit more smoothly. And it's weird because when you're looking online and you also read comments, it seems about 50, 50% of the time that that works. Maybe it's a little bit more, but 
That's not a, a foolproof way to, to, no, to no, fix it. No, no, it's just one way of many that you can try. Yeah, and it's cheap, so you can give it a shot. Right. But you have one of those things in your house, I would assume. So. Yeah, exactly. But what you really should do is take it someplace to a professional to be resurfaced. Don't buy CD doctors and these little the, like fifteen dollar thirty hand cranking polisher those things. Those do not work. <laughs> They, I mean, they, they can, obviously they wouldn't sell them if it never worked, but they make your disc worse overall. You know, it's, it, they take off such a layer of, such a significant layer of the CD that you can't really afford to get any scratches on it ever again. Hmm. So professional machines, and I mean like really nice ones, thousands of dollars, can actually make your discs look pretty new. They can take off such a small amount and spread, um, I forget what the kind of fluid they use for it to that takes the place of toothpaste basically okay. in this situation huh. um but it can really fix it and yeah. you made an awesome point of a place to find them if you don't have a retro store yeah you. not everyone has a retro store but or a cd store or a cd store most people have a library and libraries deal with this all the time because they are lending out music cds dvd movies and they often have resurfacing machines there and they make them available to the public that's which is, awesome which is awesome so i learned this today yeah so <laughs> if you have a library maybe they'll do it for free or for a couple bucks it's pretty cool yeah the typical price tends to be about two or three bucks yeah a disc i found so it's not the cheapest thing ever but if you've got a more expensive game it's definitely worth it now unfortunately the way cds work is the data is stored really close to the top of the disc here so if you've got a game that has got a bunch of scratches on the top of the disc that data in that area is lost so yeah. it may work a little bit it may not work it it really varies from game to game and where the scratch is and um, and how deep it goes yeah, but yeah it's it's gonna be pretty much on a case-by-case -case basis so there's no resurfacing for the tops of it's true CDs, that, unfortunately. that data is usually gone at that point yeah. so just kind so of be aware try to be yeah <laughs> protect the tops of your of your games now the final thing that is a problem, this is the biggest problem because this is happening to all games and we can't stop it. It's called disc rot. I get asked about this a lot because I do have so many disc based games and you deal with it in the store as well. Especially PC stuff. Yeah. And again, disc rot is this really interesting phenomenon that we never expected to deal with. When we were in the 90s, we were sold, or the late 80s, we were sold the idea that CDs were going to last forever. That turns out to not be the case. Some of them may last a long time, but uh, a lot of these are breaking down. The, the dyes in there are starting to come apart, and there's not much you can really do about it. I mean, no. it's not necessarily anything you did either. No, it's um, it tends to be worse in really kind of warm, humid places like Florida, but it it's going to happen eventually to everything like you know 200 years from now they're all going to have disc rot and the way you can tell is you can hold a cd kind of up to the light and if you see some little pinpoints of light pointing through at you the data that was on that little pinpoint is gone yeah it is rotted away it shows up in a couple different ways right. i've also seen it just kind of make your disc look sort of brown and dirty yeah or cloudy looking almost. Yeah. yeah but the most common way is at least in my experience has been that kind of pinpoint if you hold it up to the light and it happens a lot to uh sega saturn and sega cd oh. games and dreamcast <laughs> it's all the kind of light colored discs like that huh. it's probably going to happen at some point to all the ps2 and ps1 games but it's happening to a lot of the sega stuff yeah so you know it, it is what it is uh, it's a phenomenon that a lot of people are paying attention to. I say don't necessarily worry about it because there's really nothing you can do about it. I mean, keep your games in as safe area as possible, but uh, it's just part of collecting at this point. So. Have a dehumidifier if you're really serious about it, but again, it's everything has a half-life, right? Yeah, I mean, it's true. These just have a noticeable one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's a quick look at some of the ways you might clean your cartridges and your CDs, but there's a bunch of resources out there. Yeah, there's that'll cover probably 90% of the things that you'll run into, and occasionally there might be one or two things that are a little more complex. There are ways to deal with it, but they kind of go beyond the scope of this basic video. Right. So there's a big community out there of people who can help you, people in the retro game world. 
if you search, you know, your area retro gamers, there will probably be some Facebook groups and that sort of thing that pop up. Plenty of people who are happy to help you out and answer questions. Yeah, it's true. So for instance, I collect PSP games and UMDs are so unique. And so sometimes I might get one that's damaged or whatever. So it's nice having the PSP slash Vita group there to to help me fix those. You know, very specialized, but it's nice it's there. Yeah, you can go to, you know, if it's specifically a Game Boy problem to a Game Boy collector's yeah. group, that sort of thing. Neo Geo so. Pocket Color. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Kelsey Lewin. I also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Kelsey Lewin. And I've got a podcast at Game Blitz Show. So busy. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and take care. I hope you guys found this video useful. Now, I know some of this is kind of common knowledge, common sense, but I do get asked about it quite a bit. And also too, the issue about bit rot on CDs and DVDs, man, that kind of sucks. I mean, I'll be honest, it's like, it's a serious bummer, but I find a lot of the value in the packaging itself, so I don't worry about it too much. All right, guys, thanks for watching.